Hello, I'm David Orchard, and I appreciate this invitation I received to read a few of my poems, and so I'll just start right in. Inscriptions. There are rocks along Low Gap Road, chaotic, crushed by tectonism, and displaced by distances equal to the width of deep time oceans, with Eagle Rock looming above and embedded within soft melange and rare, beautiful eclogite among serpentine outcrops. Their stories rendered on a map of one inch equals 2,000 feet by a student of geology. There are rocks along Low Gap Road, immediately east of the eponymous gap, polished and inscribed pieces of Sierra and granite displaced by hundreds of miles and placed in a neat and shady grove alongside others, mostly marble, all standing above citizens of this place, whose stories exist in family memories or, for some, only in the inscriptions on the rocks on Low Gap Road. Dead Seas. The Mediterranean dried up completely, creating 160 degree heat and a sand duned salt crusted floor 9,000 feet below sea level, a most deathly death valley, before things changed, before Gibraltar opened her long locked gates and the Atlantic again flowed in. These things happen. The Dead Sea is dead. The Great Salt Lake was once a huge glacial Lake Bonneville before things changed, before rains, drainages, and lake dried up, before swimmers became bobbers and racers set speed records on its salt flat sands. So it is here at Guadalupe Peak where I sit butt down on the grainy shoreline and feet wet on the bounding reef of the Permian Sea, looking eastward across a vast gypsum plain on which oil rigs drill through the crystallized salts of ancient waters into the riches of their left behind muds. The Beauty of Xiao He, Houston Museum of Natural Science, 2010. I have been in love with her, with the idea of her, ever since I first heard of those tall Caucasians deep in Asia, deep in now unlivable desert, an out of place race older than the oldest biblical genealogies much older, therefore, than my necessarily one-sided affections. A caption on the display stated that she was much loved. That is an archaeologist's surmise. That is my surmise. Prepared to rest for the ages, fine face uncovered, dressed in rich textiles and feathered felt, not the ugly wrappings and eviscerations of Egypt. She was much loved indeed. I want, I plead for the privilege of time travel, to visit her perhaps one year before her death, to walk among her people and circumstances, to be at her burial, to tell her then that ahead of her lies an unfathomable journey, to tell her how much I look forward to seeing her again. and sand and resolution drift. 100 million acres of broken land in the good years of ready credit and $3 wheat from newly sullied soil. Home, as in homestead, as in place homestead, as in a came true unhopeable hope of a home on a stead, a platted and recorded dream of a deeded place.
100 million acres of dust blown land in the bad years, the dry, dirty years of black clouds arisen from newly gullied soil. Homestead, as in lines on a plat, as in bounding right angled fences against which hope and tumbleweeds pile and sand and resolution drift. 100 million acres of broken heartland under all that came from the air, heat, dust, toil, despair, and return to senders, prayer. Homestead, as in the unhopable hope of a home on a stead, a ghost abode, a tattered and abandoned place, recorded by bounding fence line dooms. Bayside, witness to my friend's tectonism, the rifts, collisions, and subductions of longing to stay, yet learning, yearning to leave. This rock bears its own scars and memories, gouge and grooves from ages of ice and country rock consumed by magma in the deep time beginnings of the Appalachians. At rest, at present, daily swept clean by the gentle waves of his bay. Unburdened. I know the tectonics, how mountains come to be, their enormities and great unconformities, melange terrains and gullied pina plains, Icelandic rifts and Wegener's continental drift, metamorphic zonations, gravitational segregations, collisions, subductions, and eruptions, faults and folds in Sierra and hydrothermal gold, maps and molasses on geologic maps, and the ages of rocks timed with zircon clocks. But from where came the big rock Candy Mountain with its alcohol streams and crystal fountains and its birds and bees and cigarette trees, its lemonade springs where the bluebird sings by a lake of stew and of whiskey too that you paddle around in a big canoe where they hung the jerk who invented work and you need no socks and can eat the rocks safe from cops in a land of milk and honey. Now that is a mountain a mythic massif raised upon a poor man's plate of buoyant belief in a place to rest after toil, trouble, and quest out there somewhere in the American West, proclaimed in the voice of Burl Ives, mapped on Stegner's Pulitzer Prize, where you can chuck your cares on marble stairs neath a summit of song and altospheric air. Among the burns and blunders I discarded there. A map of the river. It is in what is beneath us, in what we breathe, in that in which we bathe. It is silt and elemental flavors. Here it is Franciscan there, beyond the eastward ridge, Franciscan again, and obsidian and ash. It is the abundant mafic and the lesser felsic, the lesser erupted, the abundant subducted. It is rock into soil, soil into roots, roots into trees, trees into soil and air. It is soil into streams, streams into river, river down to the sea. Evenings, it is the west wind with its faint scent of that sea. It is the dust and smoke of 105 fires. It is the 6,500 days before his leaving. It is the goings and returning since. His is the knowing of salmon, the red, melting, hook-jawed salmon, the compelled, obedient salmon, the knowing how a salmon knows the exact address of her fatal, natal spawn. Thank you.